the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you covered by Social Security? Then you'll be vitally interested in the idea of turning your Social Security into full security. Your Equitable Life Assurance Society will show you how simple it can be. So please listen carefully in about 13 minutes to this important message from the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Bank Theft. It's titled, The Unhappy Embezzler. The moral fiber of a nation is an invisible element, but an element which is also one of the vital parts of our daily life. It is therefore of primary importance to every person that as a people, we Americans are witnessing what seems unmistakably to be a severe breakdown in our code of ethics, our moral standards, our respect for law and order. To cite only one example, there has been almost a 10% increase in bank embezzlements with cases being reported from every section of the country, cases involving millions and millions of dollars, your dollars. The FBI records only those embezzlements affecting banks, but officials with jurisdiction over other types of defalcations report the same kind of increase in all types of business, an increase which means that more and more people in whom trust had been placed betrayed the trust, betrayed everyone, their employers, their friends, and themselves. Tonight's FBI file opens in a large Midwestern city. A heavy-set woman sweeps the hall of a suburban boarding house as one of the tenants, a bespectacled middle-aged man, comes down the stairs. Good morning, Mrs. Boone. Oh, why, Mr. Smith, I thought you were gone already. That was you in the backyard at 6 o'clock. Well, I had to feed the azaleas before I left. Well, you didn't have to do it that early. Well, I wanted to leave plenty of time to get to the station. Well, have a nice vacation. Oh, I will. The first one in 12 years. Uh, Mr. Smith, you forgot your rubbers. On purpose. But it's snowing. Well, it won't be where I'm going. <laughs> My, they must envy you at the bank. Oh, they do. The other tellers barely talk to me. Uh, oh, here. Here's the rent for the two weeks I'll be gone. Uh, thank you. Well, I better be getting along. Uh, can I help you with your bag? Uh, no, no, no. Have a good time. Uh, thank you. I'll see you in two weeks. Mr. Smith had good reason not to want his landlady to carry his bag, for in it was $8,000 stolen from the bank. Almost three weeks later, at the garage where the local FBI field office stores its cars, Special Agent Jim Taylor is looking at some notes when Agent Frank Wayne approaches. Hi, Jim. Oh, hello, Frank. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's right. I just got here myself. What's up? National Bank called the office a little while ago. Another embezzlement. They're getting to be epidemic. Yeah. A teller named Albert Smith went on vacation two weeks ago Monday. When he didn't come back or notify them, they checked his accounts. He was $8,000 short. A man could have a nice vacation on that. Yeah, he sure could. Well, let's get two cars, huh? Two? Yeah. I thought I'd run out and interview Smith's landlady while you checked at the bank. But what have we got on Smith? Oh, nothing very much. He's in his late 50s or early 60s. How long has he worked at the bank? 19 years. Let's take these two cars, Frank. Meet back at the office. Pardon me, ma'am. Where can I find Mrs. Boone? Uh, uh, Mrs. Boone. Oh, I'm Special Agent Taylor of the FBI. Here are my credentials. 
Oh, I'm sorry. We don't have an open room in the place. Albert Smith lives here, doesn't he? I knew it. I just knew something happened to the poor man. Oh, why? He said he'd be back in two weeks. And if there's anything Mr. Smith was careful about, it was time. Time and flowers. Flowers? Well, he used to nurse those azalea bushes in the backyard like they were babies. Oh, I see. Well, have you heard from him since he left? Uh, no. What happened to him? Well, there's been some trouble at the bank, ma'am. Tell me, have you been in his room? Oh, of course. I clean it every day. Oh, I'd like to take a look at it, if I may. Won't do you any good. There isn't a stitch of clothes or a smidgen of paper in the whole room. Would you mind if I have a look anyway? Oh, not at all. His rent's run out. This way. Thank you. What does Mr. Smith look like? Well, I guess you'd say average height, not what you really call fat or thin. Mm -hmm. What color hair? Uh, grayish, uh, kind of, and uh, he wears glasses. Was he particularly friendly with any of your other tenants? Oh, I guess I'm the only one in the place he ever spoke more than ten words to. Did you ever hear anything about Mr. Smith gambling or drinking? Oh, no. Well, did he mention where he was going on this vacation? Only that it was someplace warm. I see. Well, thank you, Mrs. Boone. Well, I've got my work to finish. Uh, uh, do you mind if I'll just leave the key in the door? No, that'll be fine, Mrs. Boone. I'll return it to you on my way out. <laughs> The time to start searching for a person is immediately after he disappears. For in two and a half weeks, what might have been a clue in a room before it was cleaned has vanished. A porter who might remember a person for whom he carried a bag that day has forgotten the customers of half a month ago. A cab driver who picked up a man and took him to a station that morning might have seen something helpful. But by now, the man is just a penciled notation on a trip record. A notation which has no memory which can't tell a special agent that the passenger mentioned something about taking a certain train. Or, of course, that even now the suspect is sitting on a bench in a large resort city in Florida. Here, birdies. Come get your lunch. Come down, darling. That's it. Oh! oh. 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 I'm sorry. Gracious, I'm so sorry. Well, that's quite all right. I get so busy throwing crumbs to our little friends, I can't see anything. Do you mind if I sit on this bench, too? Oh, no, not at all. Thank you. Would you take these packages for a minute? Why, surely. Please be careful of the small one. That's a toy for George. Here, birdies. Come on down. Come down and get your lunch. Is George your son? Oh, mercy, no. He's my canary. Goodness, is it five already? No, it rang four o'clock. Actually, the right time is two minutes after. I was afraid I missed my bus. I'm always doing that. Vernon says my name ought to be Miss Bus instead of Miss Marshall. <laughs> is Vernon another canary? Vernon? Oh, no. He's my brother. Oh. Yes, he travels for a medicine company. That's why I have George. He keeps me company while Vernon's away. Well, that's nice. Goodness, I've only been sitting here a few minutes and we are just chattering away like old friends. Well, that's right, we are. And we don't even know each other's names. You're Miss Marshall. Now, who told you that? You. I didn't. Miss Bus instead of Miss Marshall. Oh, <laughs> of course. Uh, my name is Smith, Albert Smith. Well, I'm very glad to know you. Do you live in Gulf City? No, no, I'm just here on a little vacation. Oh. I read so much about the Crenshaw Hotel, I decided I just had to see it. But, well, I don't like it. It's, it's too busy. And wherever you go, people are drinking and there's loud music. It's not restful. Well, that's too bad. If I had any place else to go, I'd leave there today. Really? Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, in that case... What? Well, I was thinking of a place for you. But, well, if you can afford the Crenshaw, you wouldn't like this. Where is it? In my house. I rent the spare room and the boarder I had moved away last week. Miss Marshall, would... Would you consider me... 
Well, you don't even know where I live. You said you were taking a bus, so it can't be far. Isn't that clever of you? <laughs> I live in Oceanville. Well, that's not very far. Mr. Smith, did you really mean it about renting the room? Of course. When does your bus leave? Oh, around five o'clock, either ten to or ten after. I never remember. Well, either way, it leaves plenty of time for me. I'll get my things at the hotel and go with you. An investigation like this, a search for a missing embezzler, involves many things, many people. FBI headquarters in Washington searched their records on every Albert Smith. A snapshot of Smith was found, a snapshot taken on a summer picnic. Now, armed with a picture and at least a partial description, your FBI broadcast an alarm, an alarm that went to every resort city in the country. George, are you hungry again? Oh, you're teasing me. That's not nice. That's not nice at all. Uh, Clara? Oh, yes, Albert. Can you come out to the yard a minute? Of course. I, I want to show you something. What is it? Look at your azaleas. <gasps> Albert, they're just too perfect. Oh, my, you've done wonders to this garden. In one week, you've got the place looking like those pictures in the magazines. Thank you. It, it, it's, it's been the most wonderful week I ever had in my life. And, well, I want to thank you. Thank me? Why, only yesterday I was teaching George to chirp your name and thinking how lucky I was to find such a border. <gasps> Why, that's Vernon. <laughs> Vernon! <laughs> oh, oh, Clara, you oh, old brother. Put down, put down, <laughs> Oh, gracious. Dear, I haven't had a chance to introduce you. Albert, this is my brother Vernon. Well, how do, do, how do. How do you do? Albert's last name is Smith. He's our new boy. Well, fine, fine. Tell me, has Clara made you any buttermilk pancakes? No, oh, yes, every morning. <laughs> say, you're in real good. Vernon, what a thing to say. <laughs> well, if you pardon me, I think I'll go to my room. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. I'll see you later, Mr. Smith. Albert, don't take a nap. Dinner will be ready soon. Uh, all right, Clara. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Say, uh, who, uh, who's the new boarder? I met him last week in Gulf City. Oh, where? On a bench in the park. Why, Clara, you picked him up. Now, don't go saying things <coughs> like that. Well, it's true. It is not. Yes, I yes. stepped on his foot by accident, and we started talking, and, uh, well, the next thing I knew, he was on the bus Oh, with sure, me. sure. Oh, now, please, Vernon, <laughs> quiet. Huh? About Mr. Smith. Hmm? Well, he doesn't know I know. But he's in trouble. Mm hmm? How do you know? Well, the day after he got here, he asked me if there was any place in Oceanville that sold out-of-town newspapers. Then, when I was cleaning his room yesterday, I found this clipping. Well, I... Hmm. Picture and everything. Yes. He never said anything to me about it. So I didn't feel it was polite for me to mention it. Well, what do you know? Eight thousand dollars. Vernon, there's only one thing to do. What? We'll just take the money away from him. In just a few moments, we'll return you to tonight's case from the official files of the FBI. But right now, let's talk about family security. Do you know how full security differs from social security? To help give you the answer, we have as our guest tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Irvin Hoffman. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Now, first of all, do you have any children, Mrs. Hoffman? Yes, we do. Two little boys. Well, that's wonderful. And I bet it's because of them that you have the worried look, Mr. Hoffman. Well, how right you are, Mr. Keating. 
You see, right now, Social Security isn't nearly enough to keep Mary and the children in comfort if something happened to me. $116 a month wouldn't go far these days. Well, that's not much, is it? Well, how much more would you need? We don't know, uh, and that's why we're so interested in Equitable Security's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers that you told about on the radio. Can we see one? Well, you certainly can. This fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers, published by the Equitable Society, is specially designed to make it easy for you to figure out how much more your family would need to turn Social Security into full security. Now, look here. Notice how it guides you every step of the way with easy-to-understand pictures. Every important item of living expense is included. You fill it out yourself. There's no guesswork. You get a figure that's accurate and trustworthy. Irv, we really need a chart like this. We certainly do, Mr. Keating. Where can I buy one? Well, you can't. It's yours free. And after you've filled it in, your Equitable Society representative will be glad to show you how to turn your Social Security into full security. Does that cost much? You'd be surprised how little it may cost. Everybody with Social Security has a good head start toward full security, and almost everybody has some insurance. So that all you may need is a small amount of additional insurance to give you that full security everybody longs for. So why not get in touch with your Equitable Society representative soon? He'll be glad to give you a free copy of the Equitable Society's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Unhappy Embezzler. Tonight we are hearing of a heretofore respectable elderly man suddenly committing a crime, wrecking by one thoughtless act his years of useful work. What brought about this change? Was it the all too prevalent thought, only fools work and anyway I won't get caught? That false and vicious philosophy perhaps accounts for the fact that almost half of our crimes are being committed by people with no recorded previous criminal record. Was it inadequate moral training in their youth that led those newcomers to take their first step into law-breaking? Whatever it is that nurtures each year's fresh crop of criminals, your FBI says with deep conviction, parents who instill in their children old-fashioned moral standards bequeath them a lifelong legacy for decent, law-abiding living. Tonight's FBI file continues at the local FBI field office. Jim, I checked the wire room. Nothing in on Smith yet. Well, this may be some help to us. This envelope just arrived from Mrs. Bourne. Smith's landlady? Yeah, that's right. She says she just got this card from Smith. Um, dear Mrs. Bourne, I fed the azaleas the day I left, which was the 11th. Please mark that on your calendar so you'll remember to feed them again on the 11th of next month. They should be fed once a month, and when the, when the weather gets warm, please keep the ground moist. Azaleas are always thirsty. Regards, signed Mr. Smith. Doesn't sound like he's coming back. No, no it doesn't. It's postmarked Gulf City. When? A week ago. Jim, we'd better call the Gulf City police. Right, Frank. Well, let's get the next plane down there. Burning, you scared me. Well, uh, where's the star border? Out for a walk. A uh, chance for you to be a good landlady and clean his room again. Oh, Vernon, I feel so sneaky going through his things. Besides, I've already done it. Mm hmm? You find anything? Not a penny. Hello? Oh, we're in the kitchen, Albert. Oh, it's a beautiful day, Clara, and I. Oh. Good morning, Vernon. Morning, morning, morning. Sit down, sit down. Maybe then Clyde will serve me. Oh, mercy, honey. I haven't brought you anything, have I? Here's some coffee to start with. Uh, thanks. Uh, Clara, I came home by way of the boardwalk. Now, Albert, don't you go looking at any other girls. Vernon, oh. I wasn't doing that. Of course not. Uh, there's a new bingo parlor, Clara. It opened today. Really? I just love bingo. Uh, would you like to go? Oh, yes. But, of course, I hate to leave Vernon here alone. 
Oh. Oh, Albert, don't look so serious. I don't want to go. You mind if I do? No, sis, you two lovebirds run along. I'll stay home and talk to George. Checking the whereabouts of a missing suspect in any large city is a difficult job. But in a place like Gulf City, a resort where there are almost as many hotels as private homes, it becomes a matter of dogged research, of walking street after street, of examining page after page of one register, then another, until you either run out of hotels or come to the right one. Smith was seen here and checked out a week ago, Frank. Any forwarding address? No, and he paid his bill by cash. Well, we've narrowed his lead. We're only a week behind now. Yeah. Oh, did you get anything around the lobby? The girl at the newsstand thought she remembered him, but she wasn't sure. Oh. Nobody else recognized the pictures. Smith was paying 30 a day for his room, so you might have been right about it being too rich for his blood. Well, there are still some hotels we haven't been to. Well, let's hit the ones in the lower brackets, huh? Okay. Frank, Frank, wait a minute, will you? Yes? Smith's landlady said he was crazy about flowers. Well, they've got a big botanical garden here. Can you handle those cheap hotels alone? Sure, Jim. Okay, I'll visit the gardens then. See you at police headquarters. Goodness, Albert, bingo is so exhausting. Isn't it? I wonder what time it's getting to be. Well, it's... 4.36. Oh, I'd better get home and put dinner on. Uh, can't we just sit here a minute and listen to the waves? There, there's something I have to talk to you about. Oh. First, let me say how much I appreciate all you've done. Oh, now stop that nonsense. It's true. You, you've been so nice to me. Too nice to deceive anymore. Whatever are you talking about? My mother used to say, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And she was right. Clara, I'm not a retired broker. I'm, I'm just a common thief. Albert. I stole $8,000 from a bank I worked in. I can't believe it. It's true. Well, Albert, if you took money from the bank, well, there must have been a good reason. No, there wasn't. I, I can't even tell you why I did it. I handled money for 19 years and never took a penny that wasn't mine. Then suddenly, one day, I just reached into the cash drawer and stole $8,000. Oh, we are all human, Albert. But it doesn't make sense. I, I steal all that money and I, I can't enjoy it. It's a millstone. Then when you said you were having fun living at my house, that was a lie, too? Oh, no. Well, you are enjoying some of it. Most of what I spent was my own. I've only used a few hundred dollars of the bank's money. Well, then you're not in any trouble. Why not? Well, the bank will be glad to take what's left and forget the whole thing. Where is the money, Albert? It's buried. In your backyard, under the white azaleas in the corner. Oh. Well, we'd better be getting home. Special agents are trained to explore every possible lead, like the one which took Agent Taylor to the Gulf City Botanical Gardens, where he found a caretaker who remembered Albert Smith and who knew Smith had moved on to Oceanville. But in that city, no one at any of the transportation terminals recognized Smith's picture. He wasn't registered at any hotel. He hadn't visited any garden supply store. Then Agent Taylor saw a sign in a window, a sign reading, Starts Tonight, Flower Show, Oceanville Arena. Quite a few people here, Frank. But no Mr. Smith. Well, he might show up yet. What time do flower shows close? Wait a minute, I think it tells on the ticket. Yeah, 11 o'clock. Half an hour to go. Mm -hmm. I wonder what ever happened to tulips and daffodils and the flowers they had when I was a kid. Hmm? Look at the signs on these things. 
Anemone japonica, Chinese plumbago. <laughs> People must spend half the year growing these and the other half thinking of a name. Frank, wait, wait. We're missing a bet. All these flowers are entries. Come on, let's get to the officials' booth. Would you like a tally, Clara? Gracious, have you counted it already? Yeah, yeah. Almost $8,000. My, it does look pretty. Yeah. <laughs> now you can go back to Gulf City and pick up another border. <laughs> Vernon, I told you I did not pick Albert <laughs> up, and yes, you stopped yes, teasing yes, me. Yes, hello? Well, oh. Or Albert. I thought you were asleep. No, I just went for a walk, and then I went... Why... Why, that's m my money. Uh, yes. But what are you doing with it? Well, it may sound naughty of me, but I told Vernon where it was buried. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, Clara. Now, please, put it back in the bag, and I'll take it up to my room. It'll uh, be safer with me. But it's mine. It was. Huh? Your room rent's $20 a month. You're just paying 400 months in advance. Now, see here, Vernon, I want that money. No, you don't. Oh, no. oh my arm. No, Vernon, no, no violence. Yes. No violence, ah. please. Just a minute. Huh? Say, oh, oh, whoever you are, thank you for saving me. Albert, are these men friends of yours? Well, that all depends on how you look at it, ma'am. We're special agents of the FBI. Albert Smith was tried and convicted for violating the Federal Reserve Act and sentenced to a federal prison. Clara and Vernon Marshall were also convicted for their part in the crime. Special Agents Taylor and Wayne arrived at the home of Clara and Vernon Marshall because of their trip to the flower show. Because Agent Taylor thought of checking the names of those entering Albert Smith's favorite, the Azalea. Because in that group was one entry card bearing his name and his address. And so another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation was closed. Closed with three more people learning that the philosophy of getting away with it is false. Closed with another $8,000 recovered by your FBI. Part of the millions upon millions of dollars recovered each year from criminals and returned to the rightful owners. Returned to you, the American people. Now, just two things to remember about the Equitable's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. First, it shows you exactly what monthly income your family would require if the breadwinner should die unexpectedly. Second, this pictorial chart doesn't cost you one cent. Ask your Equitable Society representative for a free copy or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Subversive Activities. Its title, The Un-American Patriot. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Harley Bear, Mary Carr, Wally Mayer, Jeanette Nolan, and Les Tremaine. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Un-American Patriot on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood. <laughs>